All right, so this is uh, the Riza Mueller, Riza and Mueller Load 75 initial rundown. Um, this is the Load 75 with the roll-off hub and the high-speed version, so this thing could get up to about 28 miles an hour on assist uh, if you're really kind of pedaling. It doesn't just go, you have to actually pedal. So I wanted to show you with this with the rain cover on it. Um, I have, uh, this is one of the most expensive bikes I think you could get from their lineup. Um, and this is it with the rain cover and I'm showing you how to kind of undo it a little bit here to see how practical it is if you're gonna get this and get the rain cover. There's just not a lot of stuff online about this rain cover and kind of how people put it on and uh, how it's used. And uh, there was no instructions with it, which I found somewhat interesting, but I had it installed uh, by the dealer who I bought the bike from, so maybe they kept the instructions or something. I'm not exactly sure. In any case, it uh, goes up pretty quickly if you want to kind of go in more of a summer mode, but the kids have actually really been enjoying it with it on. It feels like they're in a fort, so I've been keeping it on while the weather's cool because it actually stays pretty darn warm in there even though it's down to the 30s or 40s uh, in the mornings. Um, I'm in California, so it's not really a snow protection, but there's been some light rain this year. Uh, so uh, I've had this bike for uh, since about July. I've had some problems with it, which I could, could detail in a longer video, maybe some other time. I just wanted to give you my initial thoughts here. Um, I have about 2,000 miles on it in, uh, since July or so, and that's after having it not there for a month. Here you can see there, there's actually a cover for the rain cover um, that kind of blocks it, and it's not very intuitive how it goes back on, so it looks silly. But what I wanted to do here is show you the real-time picture of how long it takes to take it apart. Um, and it actually comes apart pretty quickly. and comes off pretty quickly, and it goes on just almost just about as, as quickly as it comes off. Um, so if you ever were like, oh, I don't, you know, is this going to take a whole long time to get in and out? No, you know, your kid can be whining in the morning and you can get this on pretty quickly. Um, it's very well built, but there's some kind of pain points to this that this is already kind of rubbed. You see, I'm trying to get this rubber out of there. Um, those little rubber ends have already kind of, um, falling apart and then there's another bar crossbar on the top of it that kind of keeps the structure that's already poking out of the velcro as well so I'm kind of disappointed with how much it is it's like I think I paid $722 for it um, that's just the factory cost um, they could have done a lot better job I think on kind of thinking out some of those pain points but I suppose you're usually only taking this on and off a couple times a season um, so this is the bike without the rain cover on it. It's pretty low profile. It's probably not as low profile, obviously, as, as maybe a bullet, but it's not as big as uh, an urban arrow, which is kind of the sweet spot of what I was looking for. I want a little something a little bit bigger than a bullet bike and uh, a little bit less bulky than an urban arrow. And this fills that bill pretty perfectly, although it is much more expensive for a couple reasons that we'll go over here. Um, so here, I think I just wanted to show you its turning ability. It's got an okay turning radius. Um, I used to have the Muley, which had a really good turning radius, and this is not nearly as good, um, but it is a very, very long bike. I think it's like eight and a half feet or something like that. So it's to be expected um, when it's got this type of a setup in the front. What I also wanted to show you is the braking power. Um, I mean, you can go online and see what the specs are. This is the 2021 version, I believe, of the bike. Um, I'm not, I doubt they've changed the brakes since then. I mean, they're very powerful brakes. I've never felt concerned about it. Although there's times I've been bombing down a hill um, and I've been a little bit concerned about the braking, but that was just my own fear. Um, they've, they've held up pretty darn well. Um, and like I said, this has kind of been a daily driver for me and it's also my weekend getaway bike, uh, with the kids. So it's important that it's kind of in tip top shape. I think in this part, I'm trying to show you the, uh, <laughs> I'm trying to show you the, uh, the hydraulics here. Um, they work really well. I think I had to get off the kickstand and make it work properly. So it's a full hydraulics meaning, uh, or full suspension, I suppose, which means, um, 
you know, there's suspension in the front and there's suspension in the back. And this has been big for me for the comfort of riding this 22 miles round trip for my commute. Uh, and I do commute two to three days a week now, even though the pandemic's still going. Um, it's also been uh, really great for the kids. Uh, they used to kind of not like the muley, although they liked the muley because it was up a little bit. Um, but now they're on these cushions, which are just on hard plastic, as you can see here. Um, they have enough room for two of them. There's a two-year-old and a five-year-old, or two-and-a-half and five-and-a-half-year-old now. Um, but the full suspension really makes it nice for them. What I'm showing you here is kind of the seats and, let's think a five-point harness. Very well thought out. I like them, but they do not adjust quickly. Um, you know, you can't just adjust it per child quickly. So they kind of have their own designated spots. Um, and you know, if you knew my kid, you could probably tell the spots by their stains, which one sits where, but, um, you know, it's, they could have done a little bit better there. What I also wanted to show you is that there's this large cavity underneath the front seat, which is actually really helpful. I can fit the smallest kid's helmet in there. Usually I fit, um, a lunchbox or something in there. You can kind of see how, how much space you have there to put stuff there. I also put um, kind of a, a repair kit. Uh, that's a good place to shove that there as well. Um, so it won't rattle around and usually things don't kind of roll around, but you gotta be careful because that's also where junk can kind of get stored up and, and uh, uh, you gotta clean this thing out every once in a while if you have kids because undoubtedly they're probably gonna be eating in the bike or doing something in the bike. Um, I wanted to show you the strap. This is kind of, a, this is kind of a bonus. I didn't know about this, but the rear rack, which is nice and solid and takes my work gear and, uh, and or the shopping that we have and or all the other stuff that the kids have that they don't want to have in the bike with them. Um, this has this nice little strap that I thought is really nice. You can just shove jackets there, a helmet there, um, if you see my previous video, you know, I'm very frustrated with the lack of bottle holders and this one has on cargo bikes and this one is no exception. This has no bottle holder. So, Hey, this, uh, <laughs> it holds it really securely. It's a great place to hold a bottle, uh, but you'll never access it very quickly while you're bombing down a hill. Um, and then the next part is the lock. So the, I don't do a very good job in this video. I don't think of showing you, but it locks to the frame lock. So, um, when I lock it up, I go to the store or something um there's a frame lock but i don't really like that i like it to lock to something even though this bike is so heavy you are not picking this up and walking away with it um you know it's nice to have a chain on it hopefully it's some sort of deterrent it just locks in there and i think this is a really nice place to put it um it kind of i mean for a lot of the people that like to put saddlebags you'll notice here also that i'm having trouble putting it back together this is indicative of how it's well made, but it's also finicky after 2,000 miles and locking it up all the time. Um, I don't know about the longevity. I did see in a previous iteration of those bikes, somewhere in the wild, somebody had uh, their chain lock actually right here in uh, some sort of uh, bottle catch. That might be a good place for a bottle holder to go. There's no natural um, points to mount anything there which I think is kind of a, a little bit of an oversight. I mean, that's probably the best place to put a water bottle, but um, they don't have one there. Uh, this comes with a really nice seat. Um, it's, uh, I don't know what to say. It's something that you, you'd think is just a gel seat and you probably wouldn't like it, but it's been really solid for me. Um, so I enjoy it. Um, there are two batteries on this one, so it gets a long range. If I did eco only, I'd get like 138, it tells me. Um, if I did tour, I'd get like 100, uh, the Sport, which is the next fastest. I would get like 50 or 70. And then they, the I get about over well over 40 miles, probably 50 miles in the turbo mode. So it's a little bit under, uh, under season there. This is the lights. Um, you can see there's a bright function, which I think is really great. Um, there are daytime running lights on this. I think this is per code in Germany that they have to have daytime running lights. There's a way that the manufacturer or your dealer can turn it off, or you could probably fuddle around with the settings to turn it off. I like the daytime running lights. I've always think that people should have lights on their bike. I don't care what time of day it is. <clears throat> um, and uh, this one's just, it, they're really solid. You can also see that they kind of get a little bit brighter when you're braking. 
Um, I think that's just a really neat feature. Um, it's just a really great safety feature for this bike, uh, especially if you're carrying your kids. Now I'm going to go to the display. Um, there's been some updates to the display, which I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of, but uh, maybe that's another video. Here you can see my odometer here. Um, that's kind of nice. This shows you kind of the power. I wanted to show you here the maps function on this is, I think, less than useless. Um, I think it's a hindrance to have it on there. Um, it does not display anything. I, I'm not blanking anything out here. Uh, there are no streets. Um, and I selected, you know, the California map. So it's totally useless. This shows you your distance that you've gone, the time that you've been traveling for the day, the average of uh, MPH, and then that's the, your MPH up there, or your, yeah, your, your miles per hour up there. So this is just, there's a couple different screens that you can scroll through, and I think you can customize them. This is kind of your real-time speed. This is probably the one I use the most. You can see you can also use it with your finger. So it shows you how fast you're going and how much you're pedaling versus how much the engine's going, which is kind of nice. Um, this is how you can also select through it on the left hand side. That's kind of what I'm trying to show you here. This is how you turn it on. So you turn on the display and then you scroll up for how fast you want it to go. And then you scroll down if you want to go off again. Um, there's also a horn on this. Um, I think I'm trying to show you in this, but um, it's a nice horn. It sounds like a Honda Accord or Honda Civic maybe. So I have the roll off hub and it has the um, electronic shifting. Um, I really like the shifting. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to, even though I've had an Alfini hub before, you kind of got to get used to letting off the um, pedals a little bit when you spin. Um, but it's, it's a little bit different than the Alfini, but it's still really responsive. And the electronic shifting portion of it is really nice. There's an audible click a little bit or a little hum. Um, and so you know when you've gone. And up in the, up in the display, it also tells you what gear you're in <clears throat> in real time on this one. But with the other ones, it kind of cycles through and it, it points up. This is how easy it is to take off the display. I always take this off whenever I'm going to the store or something. Um, it, it, if you pay $4.99, it automatically locks the bike. I don't know why you have to pay for that. That seems like baloney to me for, you know, a $10,000 bike. Um, it just kind of feels like people are nickeling down. I mean, you, you should be able to just get that and turn it on and off. There's also a light switch. I mean, if you want to turn off the lights, but I think you have to change that in the manufacturer settings. It's not a default. Um, as you can see, I have the uh, quad lock there too. I put my, my phone on my <clears throat> bike. So that was it. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you like this, uh, let me know and I can do more videos about this bike.